So I would ask him a few questions. One, do you have a smartphone? He what does, yes. Answer? He does. He has Good an one. iPhone or a Samsung? He has, I think he has an Android. A Android, Samsung. excellent. So, okay, th- is that phone connected to the internet? Very much so. Very much. So he has internet connectivity and he has a smartphone. Yes. Does that smartphone has a ca- have a camera? Yes. Okay, guess what? You can now be a YouTube creator, start uploading. People approach us all the time and say, how do you make money from Kosher Money? Well, one way we make money is on YouTube. We have ads running before, during, after the clip, and YouTube will pay us a certain amount of money per view. So if you watch this clip and you watched an ad before it, thank you so much. And more and more people are doing this. More and more people are hopping onto YouTube, like our next guest. His name is Micha. He's originally from Israel, spent some time in the States. He's back in the States, and he has a YouTube channel solely dedicated to Hebrew speakers, where twice a day he jumps on YouTube and talks about what's happening in the stock market. And people love it. They eat it up with a spoon. He makes money from that. He has other ways he's making money from it. And it's a really cool side hustle. So we brought him down here to talk about what he's doing, how he's making money. And I think a lot of people will be able to, maybe not everyone, but I do think that there will be some people listening to this that will sort of spark something inside of them. And my goal is that I want to hear from someone six months from now, a year from now, two years from now, that they listen to this episode and they created a new revenue stream for themselves, for their family. I really think that that can happen. And I want to do more episodes like this. I want to find people that are making money in creative ways and perhaps use those practical tips for you guys. And you pick up a camera and he'll talk about how you can get started and maybe make a few shekels. Without further ado, we give you Micha. Being a Jew, awesome. Managing personal finances, not so awesome. Welcome to Kosher Money. Another episode of Kosher Money, we have with us Micah. Micah, Micha. Micha. No, I want to go with what, what do Israelis say? How do they pronounce Israelis, it? Israelis, Micha. Micha. We're going to go with Micha. Um, so appropriate, your last name is Stocks. Do people think it's actually yeah, Micha Stocks? Believe me, some do. Right. So tell, tell the audience who you are. It's very interesting. This episode is quite different than our other episodes. And I like episodes like this because they're different. They're not your typical here's how much you need to budget on a weekly basis, which is important, but I love what you're doing. It's it's very different. Um, I think people will be able to see what you're doing and try to like open their minds to say, hey, how can I apply that in my own life? So tell us who you are and what do you do? Excellent question. So first of all, thanks for having me here. Sure. I think it's a great opportunity. Uh, my last name is not Stocks, although probably the, the title will be Micah Stocks. So it's Micha Katran. All the difficult pronunciation. I have a cha, I have a ra, I have everything <laughs> inside. Uh, we relocated to the US about seven years ago, almost seven years. I have a family, I have a wife and three kids. And for the last year, actually a year and almost a month, uh, I'm running a YouTube channel called Micah Stocks. That's how the last name became Stocks, which is basically um, providing Hebrew speaking viewers, because it's on U- YouTube, um, a better view on investing, on trading, and on what, what goes on on Wall Street, where, whether it's news, trading ideas, investing ideas, opening their minds to how they can grow their wealth. That's a whole idea. So a CNBC for Hebrew speakers, yes, right? Yes, exactly. I can say that. I, I work there, but I, I, I appreciate what you're doing because, and we spoke about this prior, is there anything like this in Israel? Is If someone was interested in the U.S. stock market or international stocks, is can they turn on the television in Tel Aviv and get a Hebrew speaking individual that understands the markets, talk to them? So it's it's a very good question because the answer is, it's clear the answer is no, but it's not exactly no. So let's open it up. About a year ago when I started the channel, actually I started because I helped a lot of friends mm. and I thought, you know what, why help only a few? Let's just post a few videos on YouTube and let's help more people. Mm. It was came, you know, at the beginning, it's not a lot of money. I, even today, it's not a lot of money. It's not, you know, it's not that... It's not something that you should say, you know what, that's going to provide for my family. Not at all. It's, it really came from 
a place where I wanted to help. And I started by posting videos per topic, let's call it. After a few weeks, after a few months, I found out that understanding what goes on on a day-to-day basis is really lacking. Now, seven years ago when I was in Israel, you did have the finan- you have financial newspapers. You have two or three and you have basic Israeli websites. Now, through this channel, you can really feel the gap between the exposure they get through the channel versus those. So it's not like it doesn't totally exist. It exists, but it's not even close to CNBC. So people were approaching you prior to the channel and they were asking you financial related questions. Was it? Yeah, it's, it's was not it, financial. You, you, know the, you know the disclaimer. Yes, disclaimer. Financial. These are not <laughs> investment advice. We'll put it in the show notes. But what types of questions were they asking? Were they asking you for individual stock suggestions? Were they asking you how to open an IRA? And why did they come to you? What's your, what's your background prior to this? So the, my background, let's start with that. Actually, I came from a business background. Mm-hmm. I came to the U.S. relocated through one of the biggest tech companies in, in Israel, where I started here their whole analytics business as a vice president and a general manager. I've been involved in, in investing and in stocks for over 20 years. And, you know, 2020 was difficult, at least at the beginning. And then everyone started talking stocks mm-hmm. because I had background prior to 2020 I could understand where we're going now, combine the tech background, investment background, and the, the situation that you know, everyone faced in 2020. Now people are talking about stocks. Who do you talk to about stocks? Now investing is a very lonely place to be in. Who do you share with your, you know, your portfolio? Mm-hmm. Did you make the right decisions, the wrong decisions? Maybe someone has good, good ideas on companies that you don't even know about. How can you be exposed? Now, when you live in the, in the States, it's easy. Open Bloomberg, open CNBC, you know, sit for a week and you have a long list of, of companies. Look, look them up, right? But that's not the case when you're, when you're in a place where the information is different, is limited just because it's limited. And you start asking someone now, I know Hebrew because I grew up in Israel. I know English because I live here. And I could do the transition between or the translation between what goes on here and where are the interesting areas to invest. Now, times changed and now the market is difficult. Again, you go back to the same, the same pro. Where do you get the information? How do you know if you made the right decision or not? What should you do? Again, not from a financial advice, even from, you know, what are going to be the hot sectors for the next 24 months? Think about it. How would you know that? A friend. Exactly. So so twice a day, you hit your YouTube channel. You yeah. have almost 20,000 subscribers by the time we're recording this. Um, over 2.5, 2. 2. 2.6 million views. Um, and there's not necessarily one video that has 2 million views. This is 600-something videos that you've been putting out there day in, day out to an audience that is not millions of people. But when I look at your live streams, you have, you know, the second you go live, you have a thousand viewers. Yeah. You have, there, there's clearly a need for a product like this. And they're, it's almost like a community. Like I watch them communicate in Hebrew and you're talking to them. It, it's almost like it, it's not, it doesn't look like work for you. It looks like you're having fun. That's true. Um, so I, I have friends, right? They're, they, they're knowledgeable, um, people listening to this, very, very smart audience, right? And they're always talking about side hustles. Hey, should I sell on Amazon? Should I do this? Are you making money doing this? And we don't have to discuss the actual numbers, but people think about, hey, how can I make extra money? Or what can I do to have a side hustle? Um, here it sounds like you, you buy a mic, you know, to get going and, and you just hit record and you just start putting videos up. So let's start with the money. Are you making money on this and how? So, you know, you had several questions yes, during that my, long question. But yes. yeah, let's start, let's start from, from the latter part. Am I making money from it today? Yes. Both through YouTube and through the community that we've created, which is, let's call it a premium subscription for a community. We can talk about right. that later. But I do want to talk about 
you know, you use the term side hustle. Mm-hmm. When I started the YouTube channel, what, there was one thing that was clear to me. Actually, two things. One is I'm not going to be rich from the YouTube channel. It's, it's, it's a few thousands of dollars. It's not more than that. Mm-hmm. So it's not, you, you can get rich out of it. It's nice you mentioned it as side hustle. But the second thing was, and that might be connected to why you see all that engagement on the YouTube channel, is the fact that I said I would like as much as possible to provide value. When you come to a YouTube channel and you're thinking how to make money, the likelihood of you making money is very low because all you're going to do is you're going to try to take the top, let's say, most trending videos and you're going to do your own, but no one's going to look at you because there's a top trending one. Mm -hmm. But if you say, you know what, I'm good at something, whatever it would be, you're good at cases of, of iPhone, you're good at explaining the new iPhones, whatever it is, and provide value, I thought back then, again, from my business background, that's why people are going to hit your channel. That's why it's going to be interesting because you're going to provide them value, something that they didn't have before. Now, the information everyone has. When a new iPhone is launched, and I'm taking something I'm not even doing, right? Mm -hmm. When a new iPhone is launched, everyone can see the keynote. Everyone can go to the website. But did you see the keynote? Did you look at the website? Did you play with with the iPhone? Maybe you found something that other people didn't you can provide them value. Mm-hmm. And then you'll start making money out of it. So the way YouTube works is you need a thousand subscribers in order to monetize it. Um, do you have sponsorships? Do people say, hey, you know, wear my, wear my shirt while you're recording? You know, there are some ancillary revenues you can potentially bring in, you know. Micha Stocks brought to you by Fidelity or something of that nature. Um, is that in the cards? Do you think potentially that can be something for you down the line? So let's go back to the vision because that will answer your okay, question. Because I get that question a lot. And I get a few organizations, mainly investing platforms that kind of reach out, mainly from Israel. The vision of the channel that was clarified in the last, let's say, six months is to create the Israeli CNBC. Is to create a TV channel. It's going to be on YouTube. doesn't matter. Everyone has a smart TV right now. And it's going to broadcast. Right now, it broadcasts two live streams a day and one video, which is 6 a.m. Israel time, 11 p.m. East East Coast time. So every day, I have three pieces of content that go out with a vision of having a full broadcasting channel with CEOs that I bring to the channel. I don't get sponsored. I don't get money. uh, To answer your question very clearly, no, I don't get sponsored by anyone. But Mm -hmm. the reason why I don't agree to get sponsorship at this point in time Mm -hmm. is because I want the channel to be neutral. I want it to be objective. I want it to be that no one would kind of think of me and say, oh, yeah, he's saying that because he's promoting whatever. Let's say Bank of America, although Bank of America doesn't exist in Israel, but Mm -hmm. that's why I'm using that. Oh, that's why he's talking about that, because you know what? They're going to make money out of it. I don't want that. That creates exactly what drop, drew people into the channel mm-hmm. saying, you know what? He's saying what he thinks. He's not, you know, not, and, I'm, and when there's a delicate topic, I, you know, I take off all the screens that I share. I put on a, a camera, just look at me and I say, look, I'm coming to this conversation clean. I don't short the stock. I don't long the stock. I, you know, there's nothing. I don't hide from my viewers anything to make it objective, so mm-hmm. they can consume the information without thinking, oh, he has a, you know, he has an angle there. That's why he's saying that. Do you trade stocks yourself? Yes, I do. So when you do mention specific stocks, do you have to then say, hey, I have a position in a particular stock, or do, do so you? So I don't that? have to do. So right, it's up have to you. or not have, it's you know, it's uh, it's kind of gray at every video i make it clear more than once and actually the viewers already started telling, you don't need to say it every <laughs> that's funny i give the disclaimer that i'm not a financial advisor put aside the fact that you know i want to be transparent right. but also because the channel doesn't want to give you the fish it wants to teach you how to fish so if i'm a position yeah i share the position most of my viewers if not all of them if you ask them what's my top pick In the stock market, they know. If you want, we can talk about that later. But they know. It's very transparent. It's very clear. I put it on the table. Uh, Whoever is subscribed to my uh, community already has my portfolio in front of me. Uh They know exactly the distribution between the stocks. That's the premium subscription. Yeah, they know everything. So I'm not trying to hide it. And Mm -hmm. when I 
when I invest in something or I trade something, I tell them. But it's not a trading channel. It's not something that I, you know, I go live and let's buy it at 50 and sell it at 51. No, it's not that kind. You're not, you're not Israeli Jim Cramer. Exactly. Right. Okay. Actually, you know, today everyone is shorting whatever Jim right, Cramer right. says. Right, right. I see that on Reddit. Right, right. But right. I, I, I like Jim Cramer. I think he has a lot of knowledge. And, you yeah. know, he can take yeah, a, you sure, know, sure. a TV figure at he the end of the day. He's a personality. That's yeah. right. So, so that's interesting. So... You're not making a ton of money on this. How how are you supporting your family? Do you have a main hustle? Do you, you know is it is it something where you try to cut back on your expenses because doing something like this takes a considerable amount of time just knowing on the kosher money side putting production together, you don't yeah. have the editing, but there there's so many moving piece, pieces, parts and and costs to doing yeah. something like this. So one I was fortunate enough to uh, work very hard till the last few years and have uh, money aside. I do trade stocks, I do Mm -hmm. invest in stocks, so I do have that uh, uh, money generated uh, stream. I do get, again, it's not a lot of money from YouTube, and Mm -hmm. I do have the community. You're building up a startup. You know, everyone knows the, the garage that Bill Gates started, or whoever started companies in the garage. This is the new garage. This is a startup. This is a true startup. Started with one person that mm-hmm. used technology. And we talked earlier before we, used, before we started recording this. Um, I use technology today that provides me the ability to be just like a broadcasting channel. The live streams are 4K. The videos are 4K. The microphone I use is top, top notch. It's just like any radio station out there. So you get the best video quality, the best audio quality. I'm, I'm not sure I'm the best, but at least you get a personality behind that. So you get a premium product. Right. Going back to how to monetize yourself through YouTube, provide a premium pro. And you know, every day I'm looking for some, you know what, maybe I'll do this. Maybe I'll add this. It's That's great. That passion. So there, there are a lot of people that are working on YouTube in niches not like yours, but mm-hmm. just you know their own individual niche, and you you yeah. don't need a lot of people to subscribe to you in order to create a community. It could be a small community that you can monetize. I have a friend. He tells me he's very lazy. He's mm-hmm. a paramedic, great paramedic. But when I say lazy, I mean in terms of getting something new off the ground. Mm-hmm. You know, he has kids. He has a great job. He he's a paramedic. He he has so much knowledge to share. But he says, oh, I can't, I don't have what it takes to, you know, open a channel, you know, the production, you know, the costs, whatnot. Do you think that it's possible for someone that has knowledge to share and videos of paramedicine and education in the medical field do really well? People are actually searching for this Mm -hmm. stuff. What would you say to someone like that that sits down in front of you and says, you know, I just need a a, a good kick to to get this going. Should I do it? Am I looking at three years of of hard work to get this going, or can I see some return relatively quickly? So I would ask him a few questions. One, do you have a smartphone? What he does. Yes, answer? he does. He has good an one. iPhone or a Samsung. He has. I think he has an Android. Android a Samsung. Excellent. So okay, th- is that phone connected to the internet? Very much so. Very much. So he has internet connectivity and he has a smartphone. Yes. Does that smartphone has a cam- have a camera? Yes. Okay. Guess what. You can now be a YouTube creator, start uploading. The biggest hesitance or the biggest uh, hurdle that most of the people have is posting their first video. Because, oh, it's not going to be exactly as I want to. Oh, the lighting, oh, the camera. The, I'm going to use yeah, yeah, phone. Go ahead. This phone has a better camera or at least par to the cameras that we have here. Wow. All you need to do. And, and now a lot of YouTubers do a lot of videos from their car. Guess what? You're a paramedic. You might do it inside an ambulance, for example, right. or or whatever. And then you know you're the ambulance, whatever. Find find something you're passionate about, provide value, and just post it. It's very easy. Open. You have a you if you have a Gmail. Yes. That's yeah. it. Just subscribe to YouTube, and you have a YouTube. You just click upload, and guess what? That's your first video. And one tip that I got from a very big YouTuber in the space, in my space, which is called Meet Kevin, Mm -hmm. he said that the first, you you just need to post your first video. And hopefully your first video would be your promise to the channel. Mm -hmm. What's your promise? 
Why did you create the channel? Now, you might steer from that promise. You might go different directions over time. That's fine. But post it. Have something that everyone can go back and say, what is this channel exactly? And go back and see, oh, okay, that's how he started. That was his promise. And it's very interesting. And, and I still see people going back to my first video and saying, oh, amazing, after a year. And, you know, it, it, it helps bring that passion in. So if your friend needs anything, he has everything he needs. He doesn't right. need to go spend a dollar, right. nothing. Just click record and upload. Were you nervous? There's this hesitancy from people that I'm not a public figure. I don't want to be in the in the spotlight. Were you nervous when you clicked play on your first live stream? Of course, stream? live stream. No, live stream. It was later you, on. you go live after a few months. Live okay. is, is yeah. Di- yeah, especially if you don't come from a background of broadcast, which I didn't. I, right. I didn't work in marketing as a marketeer. I wasn't in any TV channel. I wasn't in any reality show. I'm mm-hmm. a regular person that decided he has something that he wants to contribute to the world to the hebrew speakers in the world and that's it 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 might sound strange because everyone okay did you think about the money one of my friends kept uh, and and i keep uh, joking with her about that for the first few weeks you're not monetized yet right you don't have a thousand subscribers you don't your videos are basically providing money to youtube and not no one else and she kept asking me how are you going to make money out of it same question as you asked and i told her dana don't worry i'm not worried you shouldn't worry either if people would like my content we will find a way and And here we are yeah wow and here we are and now a word from one of our sponsors are they saying it or are we saying it yakov we're live oh my gosh yakov can i ask you a question he asked me two questions one question how are you i'm good Two, are you in the market for a house? I am, and it's nerve-wracking. A lot of questions? A lot of questions, and you know what? Not everyone has the answer for me. Well, I have something for you. Something or someone? Well, I was going to give you $200,000 for a down payment. But I'd rather someone. Someone. I don't think that's true, but okay. Anywho, I do have someone for you. Ooh, this is what I'm talking about. Okay, so when I was looking for a house... And someone told me about a mortgage. I didn't really know how it worked. I what had year? a ton of what, questions. What this was 2016. Okay. Um, I ended up buying a home in North Woodmere. Um, and it was a nerve-wracking experience. Um, I, I, I had a good experience, but there are a ton of questions that come along with it. So we recently discovered Shmuel Shiowitz. Mm. You wish you knew him in 2016. I do. Although I did have I, I did have a good friend in the industry, so I was lucky. But most people don't have a friend. Right, that's true. I've got a friend. In, isn't that a Toy Story uh, clip? It, but it's Sphero, so I don't know if we should be. Yeah, no, my voice is tragic, so <laughs> it works out. Yeah, there you go. But uh, what's cool about Shmuel Shiowitz is that he's behind approved funding. And his motto is basically, it's not one size fits all. Right, the the what you are experiencing in your search mm-hmm. is very different than someone even in the same neighborhood that is looking at a similar house, and you have completely different questions for someone. It's like true because also I'm looking for a different kind of home probably than the person next to me. Our size of family could be different. Our income could be different. Our you know flexibility could be very different. I'm like, yeah, I'd really like a place there, but if that doesn't work, maybe over there. And there's so many, you know, something I learned about him is that mm-hmm. there's so many different creative ways about going about it. I always thought it's like, okay, you come in with a lump sum of money, you put a certain amount of down payment, and that's it. But right. no, no, no. Okay, it's, so let me give you a scenario. Yeah, Imagine you're, you're going to buy a house, you have a certain amount of money, you do an inspection, which you have to do before you buy a house, and then it comes out you have to replace the entire air conditioning um, unit. Where are you getting that money from? Sounds like a headache. Right. So in in that case, he might advise you to take money out from your lump sum Mm. and reallocate it towards the cost of the air conditioner. And yeah, you're going to be paying more because you're actually giving less towards your lump sum, but you might actually come out ahead. There, There are strategies and maneuvers you can be... I, you know something that I learned from him also? Yeah. I always thought that you have to put 20% down, and that's not necessarily the case. Right, right, right. Which is right. like, a very, it's a very big difference. And like you said, right, you you put 10% down, you may be paying more, but you know what? You could afford it then. Right, and you don't right. have to worry about foreclosure and all that jazz. And, you know, it's one of those type of investments where you want it. It's like 
probably your biggest purchase. Yeah, Maybe- no, we promised them 60 seconds. We're, this is like a three minute ad. seconds. Oh, okay. Oh. So approvedfunding.com yeah, yeah. slash mortgages. Yes. We should bring him down here to like actually do the ad so he can tell them. How would you do that? Where does he live? I think in Brooklyn. If technology these days, like he could live in like South Africa and I'd be like, oh, okay. So people are like, oh, how are you friends with him if you've never met him? This is 2022. It took okay. me two years until I met A.Y. Milstein. Aim humor. Yeah. Yeah. And He's I have funny. the same type of relationship with, with um, approved funding, really. It's like, we don't, I've never met face to face, but we literally talk to them all the time, whether we're doing ads or I'm like, hey, could I bother you with a quick question? He's like, it's never a bother. Go ahead. And, um, you know, the process of buying a home is a massive headache, but they really, really alleviate and make it as enjoyable as possible, truly. Without further ado, back to this week's episode. Have you made legitimate real connections with some of your subscribers? I know you talked about premium content. Have you made legitimate connections offline with people that have followed your channel, introduced you to, you know, is it, it's almost like a net, a new networking arena that you can uh, play in. It, it's still so early in the game, you know, it might sound a year's a lot and you have 20,000 subscribers, right. but it's still early in the game but i can tell you that one of the uh, one of the people that came to the channel for a conversation uh he's the ceo of a company called chegg uh came through one of the viewers one of the viewers worked at a company and he kind of reached out and said i know you want to interview ceos because i i love to bring more thoughts and more opinions to the channel just like you know just like you do and that's why i kind of you know i i send every day a few emails to all the ceos that you know whether it's Elon Musk, whether it's uh, uh, Tim Cook, and I don't, I don't have love that because I already got the no. Maybe I'll get a yes, right? right so right. I can only improve my odds that way. So I send out and I tell my viewers, you know, if you work at a company which is publicly traded in the New York Stock Exchange or the Nasdaq, send your CEO an email. He's not going to fire you for that. Send him an email. Tell him, look, Micah, the conversation is going to be in English. This is the channel. A lot of viewers. Come talk about the company. Share, you know, your passion. What do you do? Why the company is good? Why is is it investable? Don't you want the retail investors to know about your company? So through that approach, you know, I got very, very interesting people on the channel. Most of these conversations are, are in English, actually, which they're the most complicated uh, from a production perspective uh, for me because I need to transcribe it to English and then mm-hmm. I trans- translate it to Hebrew to add the closed captions. But they all exist on YouTube. So, is, yeah. Do you think CNBC, Bloomberg, Fox Business, they're aware of the work that you're doing? Mm, no, I don't think so. Probably I'm not. Too, I'm too small. And too the magni- small. When you look at the magnitude of, uh, of the U.S.-based or the English-based uh, YouTubes, you know, I'm 20,000 subscribers. All the others are tenfold of that at least. Now, if I would do the channel in English, mm-hmm. I would have... Ten times more. Right, right. But that's not that's not the market you're that's going not the, after. No, but that's not the passion. You know, right. I, I found that passion. I found that calling saying, you know what, provide that value because it doesn't exist. Yeah, I can compete with others. Probably I would I assume I'm gonna be top whatever, five ten at at that investing mm-hmm. area. But it exists. So people have the ability to sign up for some sort of monthly subscription yeah. where you provide them different tiers. They can give $5, $10, $20. What sort of additional value do you provide when someone signs up for a premium membership? So a premium membership is actually entering uh, a community just like you have CNBC Plus or uh, mm-hmm. like they have on their channel. So you get premium content, you get more live streams, you get a lot more coaching. And uh, so we have an additional live stream only for, for the community. We go over technical analysis. We go over fundamental analysis. We go over questions that they might have. We go over how to prepare yourself for the next week, especially in volatile times like we, like we have today. And there's a lot of communication between the community. So, for example, now I'm not inside our platform, right? But they're communicating with one another. You know, someone might have a question. What do you guys think about what I did here on the chart? Or what do you guys think about this company? And then you get hundreds. Uh, it's not hundreds that answer at the same time. But you get the idea and the, and the involvement of a, a lot of other people. Because I don't hold the knowledge. No one holds the knowledge by themselves. They're, as If you hear more thoughts and opinions, you might get a better understanding if 
you know, if everyone says the same thing, yeah, you might think the other way, but at least you're saying, okay, something here is off, right? If everyone agrees with you, maybe also that's, a, right. but being part of a community in investing is, at least from my perspective, is so important because as an investor, you're alone. You're with your portfolio, and when it starts going down, like from the beginning of the year, where the stock market went down between 10 to 20%, major averages, the S&P 500 and the, and the NASDAQ, you're looking at your portfolio, and you might have gone the same percentage, might have gone down a bit more. What do you do? Mm -hmm. Now, not as a financial advice. Some, you know, you just want someone to tell you what's going on. In terms of the fact that you have Israeli Hebrew-speaking individuals and how they view the market or money in general, and given your knowledge in America, do you see differences in how Israelis treat money or view money versus Americans. I know we spoke yeah. about this a little bit on our phone yeah. call, but I'd love to get into that because to me, a dollar is a dollar, a shekel is a shekel. No one views it any differently. Um, uh, ha how do you look at the two side by side? Let's start by a terminology. So you know the, the term wealth management. Mm -hmm. I tried to translate wealth to Hebrew, and it was very complicated. There's no real equivalent word correlated to wealth. Mm -hmm. So for, even from a, a verbiage perspective, you don't even have that word. So that's one thing. Second thing in Israel, uh, the whole managing your portfolio in 401k, they have pensions, which is the equivalent of 401k, but it's a lot more defensive. Defensive meaning that here in your 401k, there are probably some of your viewers say, yeah, I, I know where I'm invested. I know if I'm, you know, if I'm 80-20 in my portfolio or 60-40, I'm invested more in bonds or more in, stock, in equities. There's a philosophy behind it. And there's also a legacy. Your father invested, your grandfather invested, hopefully even generations before that. In Israel, it's a bit different. Uh, the exposure is a lot lower. They're a lot more defensive, thinking of uh, saving versus investing. And, and again, I'm, I'm generalizing. Of course, there are a lot of people that are not like that. But they're a lot more saving than investing. And when you're saving, you're not including inflation in the picture. Mm. And because you're looking at your bank statement, 100K is 100K every year if you don't touch it for seven years. But what if the inflation was 7%? You lost money. Yeah, but it's still 100K, so you're feeling good. Now, if no one educates you to look at it and say, wait a second, I just, I'm going to need to work more to get to my first apartment, my first house, then you don't even know. Mm -hmm. So the whole concept of money or the whole um, grasp of money is different. It's not it's not a gap that cannot be closed, but it's different. And, and I think part of it, and I said on my channel, actually, I had a video specifically on that, is related to our parents, at least my age, which probably might be grandparents to some of the, my viewers. In the 80s, there was a huge Fonzie scheme in Israel by the banks. So the banks, and, and it was already indicted, so I can say it was a Fonzie scheme. Wow. <laughs> they can't sue me for, for saying right, that, right. but it was a Fonzi scheme. Right. If you wanted to take a loan for a new car, they said, buy our stock. You're know, like, what do you mean? I want a loan for a new car. Yeah, yeah, but buy our stock, it's wow. going to go up. And you're saying, but it costs already, whatever, 100. It's not worth more than 10. They're like, but you want the loan, right? So buy our stock. So they inflated, they created this huge bubble. People lost 90% of their wow. wealth. And that's why they started saving versus investing. Because uh -huh. if you can't count on the bank... The uh -huh. bank, you, you know, it's the biggest financial institute that you have in front of you. Right. You start saving because you don't want anyone to take the money that you've, you, you know, you hard work uh, and you put aside. So in the States now, we spoke about this where Florida has a financial literacy curriculum in their schools. Are, are schools and yeshivos in Israel doing anything to educate students about financial literacy or is it? You know, the same at, across. At least to, to the best of my knowledge, and maybe there is a specific place that does, but to the best of my knowledge, no. And that is why when I celebrated a year of the channel, which is the beginning of April, mm -hmm. I launched a playlist on my channel, which I, I called it a course in, in, 
in the stock market, but then everyone told me it's not a course, it's actually an academy. So there's a free academy mm -hmm. for anyone that knows Hebrew. They just need to go to the playlist that says the academy of mm -hmm. the stock exchange. And they have 62 videos already. Wow. Some are shorter, some are five, 10 minutes, some are longer, 20 minutes. But it goes step by step in explaining what is the stock market? What is a stock? What is the S&P 500? What is the NASDAQ? How do you look at charts? How do you look at fundamentals? How do you look at, at balance sheets? interviews that I did with other people so they can really educate themselves. You don't need someone to educate you. You can educate yourself. We're in the 2022. Right. You don't need to go $100,000 in debt for a college to teach you that when you can go to my stocks. To That's your, something yeah. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to fight that. Right, <laughs> right. That means a college is about to sponsor uh, his YouTube channel. No, no, no. no, 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 no. no. You never I, know. I, I wish. Yeah, you never right, know. right. If yeah. any colleges are out yeah. there. Um, so that's really cool. So you mentioned before that you emailed Elon Musk, Tim yeah. Cook. What are, what are you emailing them about? I'm, I'm describing the work I do. Okay. I'm describing the channel. I'm okay. Describing uh, where the gap exists, just like I described right. it here. And that I would love for them to give me a few minutes of their time to right. have a conversation on the channel. It's going to be recorded. Right. And that's it. You never know. You never know. Now, by the way, all of the CEOs of the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ told me no. Even if I didn't send an email. Now, if I send an email, maybe one would say yes. Right, right. And then maybe the second one and maybe the third. You never know. How did you get their email addresses or at least... What's your email address? Your first name dot last name at gmail.com probably or whatever it is. It's at my company name, yeah. So Same thing, right? Now, if it doesn't get there, anyway, I got the no. Right, right. Think about it. When you work in a... When, when the whole way you look at the world is, Elon Musk already told me he's not going to come to the show. He said no? No, he didn't answer. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. So, no. If I email him 10 times, he might say yes at the 10th, maybe. Right. The no I already got. Right. Maybe right. I'll get a yes. That's awesome. That's cool. So what compelled you in your childhood to, to learn about money, right? Some people, especially with the financial stock market, a lot of people listening here don't know it. Their only exposure is, you know, Robinhood or yeah. some other um, trading app. But they don't really understand what that means, the S&P 500. What, what got you into this to not only understand it, but have an excitement to teach it to others? So the journey starts actually not from stocks themselves. It starts from companies. I always loved iPhones. I flew to the US and stood in line 5 a.m. Fifth Avenue to get an iPhone. Then you get to the, to the list and they don't have the iPhone that you want. They don't have the size of the memory that you want. But you tell them, okay, what's available? They say red, 500, whatever, and this. And you say, okay, I wanted gray, 64. But that's what they have. So I, I was very fascinated and excited from technology. And if you as an investor, if you look at it from an investment perspective, can be an owner of a company, yeah, it's a small portion, but you can be part of a company's success by owning a stock, that's amazing. Now, you might have only $150, then you buy one Apple stock. Mm -hmm. You might have $1,000, you buy one Tesla stock. You, you know, in the world of Robinhood, you mentioned you can buy fractions of stocks, mm -hmm. right? You have $20. You love this company. You see their vision in a year, two years, three years, four years. Now, again, it's not financial. Maybe now it's expensive. That's fine. But that's how you will learn. If you put $50 and then it goes down, you ask yourself, okay, now I need to learn timing and not only fascination of a company. And you start understanding business. Now, business is good even if you have a grocery store, right? You want to grow your business. So same thing. If you look at a company you invested in, is that company going to be bigger? Maybe it's not. Maybe that... Area is dying. Maybe you don't want to invest in that. It opens your mind to something. The stocks is just a way for you to play the game, to be involved. But now it's a business thing that everyone, if you have a family, right? You want to grow your wealth. You want to invest in things that will grow your wealth. How do you know if they're going to grow your wealth? So you're building your education in something that you have passion to. Stocks, they're just a vehicle for that. Mm -hmm. In terms of the apps that you use to track um, stocks and various equities, what do you like to use? So my go-to uh, from almost an all-in-one is TradingView, which mm -hmm. is an open app. It's free. There is, member, there is subscription if you want to add more 
uh, ch- more uh, capabilities, I want to say. It's the ability to be more versatile and more premium in the way you use it. So that's one thing. And the regular internet. I keep showing people Google. It sounds crazy, but Google has all the information. You right. want you want to understand why or what uh, a company specifically reported. So last week, mm-hmm. Apple and Amazon reported on Thursday. You want to know why their stocks went down. You just write their name, space IR, which would bring you to their investor relations. You have their presentation there. See it, read it. It's so easy. They write it in a way that everyone can understand. Because at the end of the day, we're investors in those companies. They want us to keep investing. They want us to have that money. So Google <laughs> sounds strange, right? And trading view if you love charts or you want to see the financials. So it's, it's just encapsulated. But there are a lot of websites. You can use Yahoo Finance. You can use Google Finance. You can use hundreds of, of websites. I- Ellie, we'll be right back to this week's episode with you and our guest. But first, do you like Kolel? I learned in Kolel okay. for a little bit. Yeah. Do you like Chabad? I love Chabad. What if we took those two words, because it's very different what I'm about to say, and we put them together, you got Kolel Chabad. You, we know them for a few months now. What do you think about them? Well, this conversation actually took place in the year 1778, mm-hmm. when Kolel Chabad was started. Our Gilgulim, we're talking about it? I, On we, their live... That's the next, stay the tuned to next week's square. inspiration for the nation. Okay. That would be amazing if you could like, go back in time. No, if you said, this week's guest is a Gilgal. If you <laughs> did like a silhouette of your next guest and it was like the golem. Uh, did he speak? I don't, I don't know. You like, just uh, grunted. Uh, <laughs> like the golem. Tell me about your experience. Yeah, Kol Chabad. Yeah, Kol Chabad. Chabad. Yeah, well, sorry, sorry, sorry. So they're Israel's oldest charity. Uh, so many people are giving recurring amounts and you can literally give a dollar a day. You can give a dollar a week. You give hundred dollars a week, or a thousand. Will they accept five thousand? I don't know. You have uh, to ask. It's worth a try. And they they're giving food to seniors. They're helping people with money that they don't have. Orphans. They have a ton of volunteers. So practically every cent of every dollar is going towards a good place. And they're very relatable people. So you can go on their website, you can contact them, you can ask them to show you more about what they do, especially maybe if you're in Israel, look them up, um, see if you can get involved, volunteer. I love when I see videos like that or photos of families that do go to Israel, maybe spend sukkahs there and they spend a day helping out and volunteering. It's so true. And also it's it's like this idea that whether you're Jewish or not, mm-hmm. um, I believe in this idea of karma you know, so you're you're watching the show. You probably want, like everyone, you want to be making more money. You want to be secure. And here are so many people that really could use your help, your money, even if it's very a little, a very little amount or a lot that you could give. Karma exists and help them get more kosher money. Is karma like a Jewish? I don't know. Thing? We, we should ask Rav Manis. How many things can I cut from this ad? I think you should bring it up. That said, if you want a free pushka, you can actually go to kolochabad.org. Mm. They'll send you a free pushka. Go, go to kolochabad.org slash kosher money. Uh, look for different dedication opportunities, different charitable opportunities, and uh, thank us later in the next world. Now back to this week's episode. I find there to be such a double-edged sword in this environment of the internet that we're in in 2022 where there's so much valuable information there there are apps that will educate you like you said google you can read wikipedia and literally come out with so much knowledge and the internet sort of like hooked you into tiktok and instagram for these 10 second rushes of you know you're holding the entire you know human existence in your hand Mm -hmm. and you're talking about Googling Apple stock to learn more and hitting news and just reading up on it where it's not as enjoyable as opening up uh, TikTok and just, you know, flipping through. And before you know it, you spent an hour on it where if people were more, had more intent when they picked up their mobile device, I think there would be, they would be in a little bit of a better place where like, okay, I know I'm going to be on my mobile device for three hours a day. Let me allocate time to learning something new, right? You go on YouTube, there's so many videos where you can literally, you can learn how to sew. You can probably learn how to do surgery. I don't recommend it. (laughs) But, you know, when you talk about, hey, just opening up Google, 
don't just go to the same five websites that you go to to get your, you know, your humor kick or your entertainment. There's there's so many things that you can go to. Like, I'm sure what you do exists in other languages, right? You know, there might be, assume, a, yeah. you know, a Russian uh, translator and, and he's, he's communicating what's happening in the U.S. stock market. When you think about where the internet is today and, and these opportunities that people have, what do you think is the the next big thing, right? Like, where do you, you know, you, you, you think big picture. You, a year ago, you didn't have a channel like this. What What's your advice to people when in 2022, whether it's, um, and this is not investment advice, but like, what do, you, what do you see out there that excites you that, you know, I know a lot of your videos are about Tesla because it's been in the news with, related to Twitter, but what out there is like, okay, this is cool. This is, um, this is different. I know with the Oculus, the virtual reality, I think someone was telling me where virtual reality is now ver- is where the internet was, was yeah. in 1994. People think they're going to be carrying their mobile devices around with them forever. In 10, 20 years, you might just have a street of people with VR goggles or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Is there something out there that people should keep their eye on, yeah. you think? And again, not from no, 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 not from a financial advice. But I'll actually stop before answering this question. Yeah. Let's start from the beginning of your of yeah, your sentence. Of my, I think uh, that we have a responsibility as content creators to excite people because at the end of the day, we're fighting as a content creator. I'm talking right mm-hmm. now, and you're a content creator as well. We're fighting over time. They can choose to see Netflix. They can choose to see Hulu. They can choose to see CNBC. They can choose to see CNN. They can choose to look at TikTok or Facebook or Instagram Reels. Mm-hmm. If our content would be better, they would see our content. Mm -hmm. If it's worse, they won't see it. That's the way I look at it. So yeah, the the data exists. Everyone can spend 12 hours combing the internet, going through uh, whatever website, but it's boring. No one's going to do it. Mm -hmm. It's an instant world today we're living in. And that's why the live streams are so much fun because... I could make them as bored as, you know, everyone would leave after five minutes. But they're exciting. Mm -hmm. In the live stream last night, I don't even know how we got to that. We got to a TV series Mm -hmm. that was an Israeli channel during the summertime when I was a kid. Now, don't ask me how we got there. But we got to that. Now, why am I saying that? It's, of course, not a point. There's nothing financial about that. Mm -hmm. It's a a kid on on a bird, really. It's, It's like so far from investing. It creates that excitement. It shows that there are a lot of exciting things, even in the bore, boring things, like you know, stocks and financial. It's boring. You can make it exciting. That's on us, right? Not on our viewers. Our viewers will choose where they want to go. Interesting. If we make interesting content, they'll come to us and not go to TikTok. So I'm not against everything. On the contrary, it makes me better because right. if people drop off my live stream or don't see the video, then I didn't make the right content. Mm. I can't blame them that they did something else and went to Facebook. They saw something more interesting there. So that's from your, your, big, your first part of the question. Three big things that I see. You mentioned Tesla. Not Tesla as a company. I think they're at the forefront of it, but autonomous driving. We're not... Uh, Maybe we will still drive our car. Maybe our kids will learn how to drive. But their kids, I don't see that happening. Mm. I have a Tesla. I don't have the full self-driving beta, but I have the full Mm self-driving. And my daughter plays soccer. Both my um, All my kids are very active. So one of my daughters plays in a club, soccer and everything. And every Sunday I need to drive to games. And it takes an hour each direction. I put on self-driving. And it tells me, and of course, my hands are on the wheel and I look at the, at the road and everything, but it's a lot more relaxing. Mm. Now, if the second I drive like an Israeli, so my score isn't that good. So I'm not in the beta program to whoever that, uh, how come he doesn't use the beta? Because my score is, I get too close. And, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. I'm an Israeli. I'm, sure, sure, you sure. Know, <laughs> I, I talk with my hands. Um, once I have the full self-driving, I'll use it every day. Every day, I don't, you know, why why not? Mm -hmm. So the whole autonomous driving is, it's here. It's going to happen. It's going to happen this year. It's going to happen next year. It's going to happen. Now, the reason why I talk often about Tesla is because 
as someone that knows technology very well, they're really three to five years before everyone else. Mm. Now, yeah, I know everyone would have um, EVs and every company has, and I call that everyone has great presentation with very nice fonts. But at the end of the day, currently, they're the only company that was able to scale in a manner that whatever they say they're doing, yeah, it might be a bit later than they're pr- promising or thing, but it happens. So the autonomous driving, that whole area, it's, it's not, it hasn't even started. Wow. I'm not even talking EVs because there are going to be a lot of EVs. You can see it in the Nordic com- uh, countries in Sweden and Norway. More than 50% of the new cars right now that are being sold are EVs. No one, wants, no one wants the internal combustion cars anymore. Bad news for internal combustion cars. Great news for whoever is EV. Now, all the companies are going to do a transition, but it's complicated. It mm-hmm. takes them time. It's a lot easier for a Rivian or a Tesla or others like this, which started from the ground up being electric. Right. So that's one huge thing. You talked about the metaverse. Um, it's, it's still debatable. Um, I don't... Uh, let's let's say it this way. I see the vision. I understand the path. Mm-hmm. I think there are still a few hurdles on the way. Now, Roblox is doing an amazing job in creating their metaverse. Uh, Nvidia, for example, is cre- Roblox is a com- is a website. Name, yeah, it's a company. Your, your viewers, I assume, know that. Okay, know, know okay. that website. At least their kids. Ask your kids. You'll probably right. know that. Publicly yeah, it's traded a, company, or yeah, Roblox is publicly oh, traded. Okay. It's a website where has tens, maybe hundreds of thousands of developers worldwide. Everyone contributes their own. They create their own worlds inside everything. Wow. It's even without the go- everything. You, you just play a game with a game that you created with others. It's not how you kind of envision it with glasses and all that, with the Oculus, right? That also might pick up. Mm-hmm. Facebook is, is really doubling down on that vision. Will it work or not? I don't know, mm-hmm. but no doubt there it's amazing if it would the whole education piece behind it phenomenal phenomenal it can tra- it it transforms everything we know about education think of learning whatever it would be putting your oculus and going back in time mm. think of learning the bible right we're all Jews we learned it right but putting the uh, put aside right now the the literature behind it you want to understand the story, right? At mm-hmm. the end of the day, the, the Bible is a story. Mm-hmm. You put the ocular and you're there. You're seeing the story. You understand what went on. Now, in the world of simulation today, right. it's not the world of 200 years ago. They, they have TikTok. They have Reels. They have all these things. Why not educate in the way? So education is going to be huge. So that's the second thing. And the third thing is the whole revolution happening in the financial industry which is called blockchain. So some call it crypto, some call it blockchain, some hear the word Bitcoin and say, oh my God, that's the demon. Right. Blockchain is going to change the whole financial system. For those listening, don't know what a blockchain is. They think it's the same thing like Roblox, yeah. <laughs> right? NFTs, Bitcoin, they hear it. People have reached out to us. You got to do an episode on yeah. Bitcoin. You got to do an episode on blockchain. Here, read these five articles. You'll see it's a no-brainer. What is the blockchain and what is Bitcoin? So let's start with blockchain because okay, that's a ahead. huge revolution. Not Bitcoin, I'll explain in a second. To the people that don't know, actually right now it's easier to explain because of what happen, what's happening in Russia. Mm-hmm. A few for This video is going to be posted and maybe people will see it in years from now. So let's explain. So two months ago, something like that, Russia was cut off from the financial system. So at the back end between banks, if you want to transfer money, there's a system called SWIFT, which moves money from one institution to the other. Usually it's more common to use it when you're moving uh, money outside countries, but it can also be done internally. If you try to transfer money from the States to a different country, the clearance time is usually between two to five days. Mm -hmm. You might encountered that in the past. Everyone blames the banks for that, which is fine, let's blame the banks, but they're not really the problem. The problem is that the back end, the system behind that moves the money is an ancient system. Mm-hmm. It was invented in 1970s or something, mm-hmm. or maybe even earlier than that. 
you know which what computer existed in 1970 right? right and and they started putting patches and patches and patches now we're used to paypal we're used to apple pay for us we click with we, we hear the the beep on the phone and the money was transferred but there's someone that's taking that risk the money didn't really transfer in real world mm-hmm. there's someone that says you know we're giving you the credit as if the money would get to eli or to micah But we don't know if it's going to... So in the middle, in theory, someone can take the money and you wouldn't get the money or I wouldn't get the money. What blockchain does, it's the, it's the internet of money. It's the layer that didn't exist when the internet was invented. Mm-hmm. It's the ability to transfer money in the speed of internet versus in the speed of ancient history. That's blockchain. Mm-hmm. Trans, a quick transfer of money. Why is it called block and chain? Because... The way they lock the transaction is called a block. So when you transfer money to me as a transaction, you need to lock it so you won't come back in two hours and say, "I didn't transfer." Everyone shows you the block and says, "What do you mean? This is the block. Mm-hmm. It's locked. You can't open it up." Mm-hmm. And they chain the blocks. That's why it's called blockchain. Okay, more than I knew uh, when I started. So now you know. So that's a blockchain. Okay. Why does it have to exist? Because when the Internet, which everyone knows now, was invented, No one knew why would people use Internet. When you go back at the, at the Internet, the first white papers, people thought maybe to make a video call, maybe to transfer messages. It was military uh, by design to move messages from one side to the other. Mm-hmm. Now we're using it in a whole different way, right? We're buying things. How is that money going to be trans? You, you go into a website, Amazon, Shopify, whatever the website it was designed by Wix. And you click purchase, right? The merchant, now you're expecting you, the package to wait 24, 48 hours in your, in your front of the house, right? Mm-hmm. He didn't get the money yet. Does that make sense? Why would he send me the package if he never got the money? Uh, because someone takes the credit. Okay. That's the credit. In the blockchain, everything would be instant. Right. Now, package is something physical. You need a delivery person to move it. What if you wanted to buy these, uh, these pictures, but as a file? You wanted the file to get just the file. You'll print them. Mm-hmm. You want the file. Instant. Instant, right? Mm-hmm. But the money doesn't get there instantly. It takes 48 hours. Now, he's basically taking the risk, giving you the JPEG. Mm-hmm. He's taking, the merchant is taking the risk that he might not get the money. Yeah, we all know he'll get the money. Someone puts credit in. It's okay. It's okay. There were patches along the way. Mm-hmm. Now, accelerate those, those transactions. Make everything digital. Mm-hmm. How do you finance that? You go to the metaverse. You want to buy something in your metaverse. Nothing would be delivered, only files. It's, it's, it's where we're going. That's why when you said futuristic, right. it solved a huge problem. Innovation solves problems. And this is... A problem that has to be solved. Have you ever purchased Bitcoin, which operates, from what I gather, on the blockchain, right? Yeah. Are you... I, ha- I have. Yeah. You have. Is... How recently? Meaning, are we talking like 2013 or... No, no, no. Recent, more recently. The last few years. Gotcha. Yeah. What's, what is it about Bitcoin that has taken the world by storm? And is it applicable? Is it just making a lot of noise because people who got an early stand to gain, if it continue, you know, that's what people get scared mm-hmm. of. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, previous guests have told us they don't understand it, so they mm-hmm. don't get involved with it. Mm-hmm. Um, what is it about Bitcoin that people should understand so that they can take a more serious look at it if they should? Bitcoin, and it's different between Bitcoin and the other cryptocurrencies. So Bitcoin is a term that everyone uses, but behind that there are 3,000 different currencies, and that's where it gets the bad rap, because mm-hmm. some of them are there shouldn't, they shouldn't be invested. Mm-hmm. investable. So anyone can theoretically create a.: Yeah, you can currency. create your own uh, currency. Mm-hmm. If no one would use it, it wouldn't have any value. Mm-hmm. Bitcoin is. A digital store of value. When you want to store value, you have $100,000. You want to make sure that in five years, you stored that value somewhere. 10, 20, 30, 100, 200 years ago, you had gold. Mm-hmm. You could store your value in gold. 
Who dis- who defined what would be the value of that brick, that gold brick? The king or the or society? King, or, or the regular merchants. Yeah. You, you want to sell your brick. Uh, two people come to sell their brick. You tell one person, I, I'm going to buy it for a thousand. The other says, and he says no. The second person says, yeah, sure, a thousand is good. What's the price of the brick gold? A thousand. Because mm-hmm. it, it's something that the, the def- it was decided what the value is. Bitcoin. Because there's a, sto- a scarcity? Because oh, there's not- now, yeah, very right. good. now you get to the scarcity and you get to the digital store of value. Now assume gold and Bitcoin are the same. This is digital mm-hmm. and this is physical. Mm-hmm. Both of these assets have scarcity, so they are reduced over time. Mm-hmm. You can't keep on making gold because it doesn't exist anymore. Same for Bitcoin. Every four years, there's a, a process that reduces the available coin. So... The value increases. Mm-hmm. So think of it as a digital gold. We're in a digital era, but we keep referring to bricks of gold. Now, again, I'll take the Russian, Russian Ukraine situation. Mm-hmm. Tens, hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians fled Ukraine, right? How, how can they make sure that the money, their hard-worked money, is with them? Let's say everything they converted to gold, to bricks of gold. Now they need a huge suitcase to roll it mm-hmm. in the train station. Do you think that's really possible? Or it's easier to take a USB disk, put it in, in your pocket with a, with a you, you only have the user password or it's a thumb, whatever it is, and you have all your wealth in a disk on key. We're in a digital era. Mm-hmm. So I know it's frightening. Because you can't see it, you can't feel it, you can't knock on it and say, oh, I, here it is. 2022? Mm. Yeah. That was uh, one of the, the first times I better understood Thank you. Bitcoin. So, and then you mentioned all these other cryptocurrencies, yeah. um, you know, investing in, you know, ha- how do you know which ones are legitimate and which ones are someone in their basement which maybe bitcoin was created at some point yeah. but how do you know which ones are legitimate and which ones are not first of all there's the internet you just look them up mm-hmm. behind every currency just like behind every currency there needs to be a project in the crypto landscape in our landscape if i talk to you about the japanese yen it was created by a country called japan right mm-hmm. it's their currency if we talk about Solana or Cardano, these are currencies in the crypto world. They have projects that if you want to sell or buy things on that country, the currency is Solana. The currency is Cardano. So you use that just like you use Japanese yen when you fly to Japan. Mm. Now, Bitcoin is a store of value. Ethereum is, let's call that the, the, the gold of things. Ethereum, which is kind of the second tier, is the mechanism that moves the money. It's like the oil. And all the others are currencies. It's like a salad. You have cucumbers, you have tomatoes, you have onions. These are the different, different uh, uh, currencies there. Fascinating. Um, <laughs> So your channel, what's the what's the name of it? Spell it for for those. We'll put sure, it in the show notes. It's uh, Micah dot stocks. M i c h a dot stocks. M i c h a dot stocks. Cool. Um, and we always like to ask a couple of questions at the end. Is there a book that you recommend to people, um, Hebrew or English, um, that you think would give them a better handle on something that's important to them? Could be finance related. Could not be. Um, what would that book be? Because I'm very much fascinated in technology and innovation, one of the books that I frequently recommend is the path that Steve Jobs went from the early days of, inv- of starting Apple all the way to, of course, his last days, which is his biography. The reason why is because there are so many shifts and changes and, and hurdles and, and challenges from a company that we see today that everyone knows what's an Apple, what's an iPhone, but if he didn't have a vision, to some extent, if he wasn't the personality that he was, and he wasn't a positive personality, Mm -hmm. I'm putting it out there. It's not like, oh, he's an amazing, no one liked to work with him. No one. He He was arrogant. 
he was rude, he was all the bad characteristics that you don't want from a leader. But at the end of the day, if he wouldn't, because of his personality, pushed everything to where only he, the, in his world, only he knows what you need. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't want to spend time with that kind of person, mm-hmm. right? But you, you know, there's a video of Steve Ballmer, which was the CEO of Microsoft mm-hmm. at the time where the iPhone was launched. And, and the, the interviewer asks Steve Ballmer, he says, what do you think about the iPhone? And he's, he's laughing out loud. And he says, huh, do you think anyone would use uh, uh, something without buttons and uh, touchscreen or something like that? I don't remember the exact uh, joke that he, and he was laughing out loud. 15 years later, we know where we are, right? right. Or 12 years later, we know where we are. So that biology, it's, it's not financial, but it's understanding the complexity of building a successful company, of CEOs, of management. Because when we invest in companies, we basically are part of a company. We need to know what the CEO likes or dislikes. We need to know what the company does or doesn't. Otherwise, we're just taking letters, random letters, and putting money in. Right. And that's gambling. That's not investing. What would be your parting message for the audience in terms of financial advice? Not, not from a stock, no, no. but thinking about money. Um, you know, if you were sitting down with your kids when they were older and they said, Dad, give me, give me something that I should always keep in mind as it relates to my money, um, whether it's budgeting, saving, investing, what would a message be? And I'm putting you on the spot here. And there, are, yeah, that's pre-record. fine. There, there, are, there are two messages, and I think we touched upon it during the show. Go ahead. One is money can be called created. You, you, can, you can find ways to make money. But at least what I would tell them, find ways that provide value. You can maybe not provide value and make money, right? You can go to a casino, you put your chips there, your number uh, is the, the right number, you make money. You didn't provide any value to the world. If you provide value and you make money, there's a passion behind it. And you can, of course, increase that. Now, it might sound, you know, kind of uh, very philosophical saying, oh, yeah, who, who thinks that way? And, but it's the truth. All of us provide some kind of value. And it doesn't matter if it's in stocks or it's, like you said, the paramedic that can teach someone how to save lives. That's huge value. And then, yeah, money will, will follow. And invest that money wisely. Don't just spend it. You know, I, I talked to one of the... So there's a, a, a guy called Peter Tuchman. He is called the Einstein, Einstein of, of Wall Street. Street. I met him. Exactly. So I met him. I was in Wall Street. I interviewed him and he was on the channel as well. And he looks, for those that don't know him, you can Google it, but he looks legitimately like Einstein. Einstein. Exactly. Yeah. And, and he said something very, very funny. He said, don't buy a Nike shoe, invest in the Nike company. Mm -hmm. Now, he he didn't mean walk barefoot, of course, but he meant from a thought perspective, don't think how to spend, think of how to invest. Mm -hmm. Because your shoe, yeah, you might walk with it another two months and it's going to be okay. But if you invest in that two months, you'll be part of Nike. You'll be Mm -hmm. part of the company. Love that. Micah, Mika... Micha, 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 with the thing. Exactly. So let's let's end off with um, pitching um, the audience. We do have some Hebrew speakers. Some people have reached out to us and said, "Hey, I love it. I'm in Israel. I don't understand all the words. What's your pitch to our audience that speaks Hebrew to uh, come over and check out your channel?" Bevret, bevakasha. Ah, bevret. Ken, betach. As kolam kol, ani mod zamech shem shem bechlal b'tochnit v'makshivim. תיכנסו ליוטיוב, לערוץ, מיכה נקודה סטוקס, יש שם את כל מה שאתם צריכים לדעת בשוק ההון. יש שם עניין, יש שם אקשן, יש חדשות, יש השקעות, יש הבנה כללית. זה פשוט, זה החליף לכל כך הרבה אנשים את מה שהם שומעים ברדיו, שלא לא מקדם אותם ולא מרחיב להם את הדעת, למשהו שמרחיב להם את הדעת. ותהנו, נהניתם. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Because so, that's in English Z- as well. Z- <laughs> they, they have all like, right? Like yeah, is like. Like and subscribe is the same. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Thank you so much for coming down. Thank you. Toda. And bye. And that's it for this week's episode. Once again, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Approved Funding and Kolal Chabad. Check them out. We've got another exciting episode for you in just a couple of weeks. We want your guest suggestions. So go to livinglechaim.com. Look us up. Submit your guest suggestions. We're on YouTube. Like and subscribe. If you have an iPhone, pull it out. 
search on Apple Podcasts for Kosher Money. Give five stars. It really helps us in the rankings. Spotify now, you can rate us. Give us thumbs up, five stars. Tell your mother-in-law about us. Hire a blimp for a day. In Florida, you can do like these airplanes that have these tail and you can write something on it. But promote us in any which way you can. We're hearing from more and more people about how enlightening these episodes are. We had uh, Mitchell Eisenberger on a few weeks ago and his episode is really helping people. I would, without exaggeration, I would say about 55 zero people have already reached out and have spoken with him about career advice. And it's kind of cool because he's an everyday Joe and now he's helping more people based off of a single episode that he had with us. So thank you so much for all your support. We can't do this without you. Check out my brother's new podcast, Inspiration for the Nation. That was a free plug. And that's how I make the money. Without further ado, I give you the end of this week's episode. Have a great week, everyone. Living L'chaim.